Alrighty, now I want to share some, yeah, I call them secrets of Silicon Valley. That's what I've learned over the last three years. I live in Silicon Valley. I moved there uh, in 2009. So, and as a topic of the conference here is <clears throat> how to reinvent the industry, I thought, okay, how, what can we learn from Silicon Valley? And I found out that I have basically three secrets I want to share with you. How Silicon Valley would reinvent industries, how Silicon Valley uh, reinvents starting a startup, and also a little on the side, how they reinvent your life. And maybe that is some inspiration for you. It was definitely for me, and uh, so I'd like to share that with you. Before I dive into that, I want to share a little bit of my story, my life, because this is basically uh, covering all three of the parts of the secrets of uh, re reinventing industries. So, and as some of you may know, some not, I was born in, in the eastern part of uh, uh, Germany in the former uh, DDR. And so, that was not the funnest part of my life since, you know, there was a wall around, especially around Berlin. So, but the, the good thing of uh, living in Berlin was that the west side was not too far, so I was aware of everything. This is a picture actually of my first uh, music player. So it was basically made of wood, as you can see. And so I could see the difference. This was, it's really hard to see, huh? This is a ghetto blaster, how you could see them and find them in, in West Berlin at this time. So it was a big difference. And I could see that every day, again and again and again. There are thousands of different examples. So, when we started, we were really hungry. Which ended up in, of course, trying harder. We had a very high motivation to achieve something. We had no money at all, so we were forced to bootstrap our business from the first day on and get to profitability as soon as possible. There was no other choice. So we basically reinvented advertising even we don't know it. We had no clue about it at all. But it was, of course, a portion of luck to do the right thing. But as well, it was, uh, as well, really a big passion and a deep passion just for the internet. So by using that, we did coincidentally the right thing. So, and what I, what I want to share with you is, of course, the Xanox story, where you can hear a little bit more uh, about later today from Andy, corporate finance partners. And you, your speech is at 3.30, down and K1. Don't miss it. Great story. Andy is a good speaker, a lot of fun. All right, yeah, so we started uh, Xanox basically reinventing advertising as I know today, I didn't know about that at the beginning. So we had actually no idea about business at all. We of course bootstrapped the whole thing, so we decorated our basically garage that was the cheapest office you could get in the city. Uh, I can't remember the price actually. And we started at the basically worst time, in the middle of the bubble 2000. And since we had no money, we of course asked family and friends to take positions, to take jobs, to help us as much as they can, uh, just because they believed in us. So it was really a hard time, but as well a very lucky and happy time. So we, as you may know, we grew up a global company. We had offices all over. At the end, we did about $300 million in revenue uh, with doing a, a, a managing by uh, five, 400 uh, employees worldwide. And finally, we sold it for $300 million to Axel Springer and Publi Group in 2007. So what could we learn about this story? How would Silicon Valley reflect on that? What, what's the general idea behind? So first of all, they would say, don't invent. Innovate. Meaning, don't try to be too smart to think you can reinvent the world. So what we did was basically 
Uh, we took an existing business model which was advertising, we put a new distribution channel to it, uh, which uh, today is known as, as the term crowdsourcing, and of course we made it much cheaper because it was a pure performance-based model. Customers only paid for success. So that made it much cheaper, and that's what we call an innovation. So if you want to learn something from that, think about it. Don't invent, innovate. Second secret, after I sold the company, I thought, okay, what's next? What can I do? I mean, what, what else is a, is a good challenge for me? And I thought it's maybe a good idea to move to Silicon Valley because most of, of the innovations, especially in our industry, come from there. Maybe I can learn something from this guy. I took my family and we moved to Silicon Valley in 2009 and yeah, having a good time there. And I started learning about almost everything. I learned from Tim Draper about investing, how difficult it is, that basically 95% of all startups will fail. He's losing tons of money again and again, but it's, it's working in a way when you do it. I learned from Google that if you collaborate in an open and transparent way, you are much faster, as you all can see with the Android devices. I learned from Facebook that social is the best distribution channel you can have right now. One billion people are accessible there, highly viral. And I learned basically from Kickstarter that an all or nothing funding model with a deal clock is a good tool to put some pressure on deals. Of course we learned some more things about customer validation, uh, about the lean startup model in, uh, in Stanford, uh, how to execute a startup basically by building, measuring, and learning. And this is a cycle which you do have basically every day again and again and again. So they teach uh, uh, a really a totally different way. I mean, I, I'm sure you all have heard about it, but this is really how they do it and how they execute it today. The fast, launch fast, uh, measure everything, and learn from your failures and repeat that again and again. So, I heard a guy say the secret of, of success of a startup is just about how able you are to deal with failure, to really adapt your whole company and everything what you are doing uh, uh, in a very short term when you, when you see something. This is uh, basically the most important capability which you should uh, uh, pay attention to when you start a new business. Yeah, and the last but not least, uh, we learned that a startup is not a small version of a company, which is uh, which is not easy to understand. But it is uh, the right way of when you see the structure of it. A startup is basically just a research team. So the only thing what they do, they need to be very crazy. First of all, they need to uh, uh, um, no no limits at all. So they have to re uh, uh, question everything. And you only can do that with a great team. You can only do it with, I think, young guys. And you only can do it if you're crazy enough to really risk almost everything which you have. And so it's easier and, and better for you if you start early. So that you, there's not much you can lose. So, and the only uh, um, point where the start, or what the purpose of the startup is to find a repeatable business model. After that moment, it's not a startup anymore. Then it becomes a corporation. And then you've got a new KPI that needs scale. How to scale it, how to repeat it again and again and again. And then you need to use totally different tools to make progress. If you, if you understand that concept, then it's clear that you have to fit in two different worlds. The startup world, and the corporate world. And you have to do both when you start from scratch and want to come up with a big thing. So all these kind of things I learned in Silicon Valley. So I thought maybe it's not a, a bad idea to reinvent the startup uh, model. So first of all, I thought, okay guys, these are my two co-founders, so we three together did Xanox uh, uh, in 2000. So I thought, guys, how about coming over here to Silicon Valley, maybe we have a good time together, do some surfing, have some fun, meet some guys, interesting guys. They are really 
tons of crazy events. And then we got the idea of the UFO. How cool is that? That's smart. Everybody knows it. And more and more we thought, yeah, why not? Let's call it a UFO. So we started again in our garage, decorating it, make it a UFO, and boom, here we go. Started the company, and here's the crew ready to start with a new vision. And the vision we have right now is you are the boss. Which, of course, is one of the biggest incentives you can say so to somebody. But in the next second, it turns into a responsibility which you hand over to him. And we believe that everyone, not everyone really, should become an entrepreneur because if he has in it, he has in it, he can, can feel it and it's just a question of your attitude. So what we want to do here is with our new um, startup to provide an ecosystem and an infrastructure which really gives everyone a chance to set up his own company to become an entrepreneur. So and this is my garage in Silicon Valley, our youth for start product, which I want to just give you a very short pitch. So you for start is the first crowd investor network for these startups. So we really think that we want to manage the long tail of startups on a software platform. So we think about 10,000 deals. So really everyone should get the chance to start something new. How it works, it's basically a faithful application where you can crowdsource your startup. Crowdsourcing in terms of offering equity for every need you have. So building a community like we did with family and friends. But now you can do it on a software. You can do it in an environment which you organize your social community anyway. So we think it's much better because now you can activate the power of the crowd for your startup and you can basically scale the bootstrapping phase. So it looks like this, here's a screenshot, the demo. You have four different categories where you can raise needs you have. So this is the jobs needs, everything and in terms of tasks you want to get done. It's money, it's assets, and it's customers. So all together we call it deal. And we do that in very short circles. Every quarter you can basically raise a deal or run a deal. And you can pull together people who should join a team, who should help you, and basically can run a virtual company on it. So the value proposition is quite easy. There are three parts involved. First, that was our motivation since we became investors and startups. We thought, we need something to filter deals. Because we are not smart enough to say that's a good idea or it's a bad idea. It's not our business. I mean, we, we are just regular guys. So how about bringing the power, the wisdom of the crowd to our deals and let them decide which one is a good idea and which not. So we filter deals basically and lowering our risk when we invest in startups to get equity. Sure. For a startup, the value proposition is quite easy, of course. It also gets validation, it gets execution and funding as, as well distribution for equity. So even if you don't have money, you can use your assets or you can use your currency which you have, which is equity. And there's a third party involved in it. These are basically the guys who run the show. All the experts, all the talents, all the people you need to build a team. And now they get the chance also to turn their skills their contacts, or even their assets into equity. So we think it's kind of a win-win-win situation, and uh, we are ready now to basically scale it. So this is what I think we have learned in Silicon Valley. We try to put in that platform. And these are the general things. It's basically called the Lean Startup Model, not on a platform, as I, as I told you. Build, measure, validate, pivot if necessary, and scale. So, on you for start, we, we think we have put all the ingredients which we have learned 
uh, to the ecosystem that everybody can do that. Um, which ends up basically that you have these quarterly funding cycles where you can really decrease your cash needs dramatically by, we think, up to 80%. You can crowdsource your execution, everything what you need. And you can use and leverage basically Facebook and all the social networks to distribute your uh, the product to your customers. So how about the second secret of Silicon Valley? Now, let's talk about the last one. And to be honest, I think this is kind of a problem, especially for, for, for you guys, since you don't have the advantage like I had that it was raised in the eastern part of Germany and I was so hungry. Yeah. So, you are not that hungry. So, this is a problem. Seriously, it is a problem. And you have to find a solution how you can fix that. And I have at least an idea where I think maybe that's the direction you should think through. And that's why I've also uh, learned in Silicon Valley. Because there are so many millionaires around you. I mean, I, I think maybe everybody's a millionaire there. <laughs> no, seriously, there are many healthy people. But they are so motivated. They are working so hard. You can't believe it. Yeah? Even if they are billionaires, they get up at 16 Draper. It's taking stage at seven, uh, having speeches in front of staff. They say, what the fuck is going on with he? Why is he so crazy? It's not because of the money, I promise you. So, and if you understand that, you can take the shortcut as he is doing today. And the answer in my eyes is just think about make meaning. So, if you find something where you really believe this makes the world a better place, uh, prevents the world from something bad, increases the quality of life, or makes the life easier for all of us, something like that, then you can find the motivation which you need to be as hungry as it's necessary. And of course, you can learn some other things. You can use, share, and collaborate. I think that's a lesson especially the Europe, uh, uh, which, uh, let's say, is a big difference I see between uh, US startups and uh, European startups. The idea of signing an NDA before telling you your idea, that's really stupid. I mean, I never got asked in Silicon Valley about signing an NDA because somebody wants to tell me something. Forget it. In Silicon Valley, everybody thinks really in a different way. They share the idea with everybody who's crossing your way, just to get some feedback.